Hello, hello, welcome to Rachel Paints Poorly. My name is Rachel and I paint poorly. Today is Viking Day for my son's elementary school class, complete with feasting, shipbuilding, and dressing up like Vikings. I tend to go a little overboard in the costume creation for these sorts of things, and as he always comes up with ideas to get my creative juices flowing, I was looking forward to hearing what he had in mind. Hi mom, for Viking Day I would like to go as a berserker. Why, of course son, what a splendid idea. After mulling over exactly how I would go about fashioning said berserker costume, I set off to do just that. But first, we'll start with the clothing. As not much remains in the way of extant pieces from the time period, what we do know is open to multiple interpretations. However, the common threads pun, are as follows, beginning with a tunic. This would have been wool and gone over the head, with decorative braid around the neck and sleeves. A leather belt secured a knife and a leather pouch, as there were no pants pockets. The pants themselves were held up with a drawstring and wrapped from the knees down by long strips of woven wool tucked into leather shoes. While actual reenactors yeah. <laughs> While actual reenactors create their clothes from scratch, I decided to recreate our look using thrifted pieces just spruced up a bit. For the shirt turned tunic, I selected an off-white, long-sleeved shirt with a button-down placket. I then removed the buttons and sewed red embroidery ribbon around the collar and cuffs as a stand-in for actual embroidery. The red of the ribbon matches the red of the pants. We know the Vikings did have colorful dyes available in red, blue, yellow, and green. These particular pants were pajama bottoms and were much tighter than those worn by the Vikings and had elastic in the waistband. However, they also didn't have pockets and were relatively plain in the correct color, so I went with them. The lower leg wrappings were made from a long strip of white cotton fabric. To prevent excess fraying, before cutting them out I sewed a running stitch down both sides and across the ends, then cut the strip out and in half, giving me two leg wraps. After dyeing the strips dark brown, they were rinsed, washed, dried, and everyone's favorite pastime, ironed. Plain neutral dress shoes, a leather belt, and a small leather bag found at the thrift store, and a buffalo tooth fashioned into a necklace complete the basic look. Up next, we have the bear head. Right away, I knew I wanted to make it out of paper mache, but I needed to find a frame that was big enough to fit on his head and also strong enough to maintain its basic shape. To do this, I started with an old brimmed hat and cut an empty gallon water jug down to fit over the crown. For the snout, I trimmed a toilet paper roll to size, then added plastic to cover the hat and attached the roll using duct tape. The jug was then stapled to the hat and I used more duct tape to shape the bear's open lower jaw. Once I was satisfied with the silhouette, it was time to add the first layer of paper mache. I used two parts water to one part flour for the base and long strips of hand shredded newspaper. To speed up the drying process, I hit it with my hair dryer, then added a second layer of paper mache and followed up with more blow drying. While I was waiting for the head to dry completely, I began work on a sword, which I fashioned out of paint stir sticks. There were three to a pack, so I cut the outer two down to handle size and gave the central stick a pointed end, then spray painted the pieces. Once the paint dried, I glued them together, then added a red strip of fabric to the handle and a healthy smear of Saxon blood for good measure. With the sword finished, it was back to the now dry bear head, which I spray painted black. His muzzle I hand painted beige and attempted to give him some nostrils with black paint. This is also when I realized that his poor little face was slightly lopsided, but I'm going to chalk it up to the rigors of being on the battlefield. His eyes are actually buttons that I removed from the thrifted men's coat that I upcycled way back earlier this year. To secure them, I poked holes in his face and sewed them in place, then added a white spot of paint. His teeth were then cut out of an index card and glued into place. For the hide, I purchased a yard and a half of faux fur. Now there's <clears throat> ooh, just the bare skin. Laid it out and cut out a neck and legs. To secure the head to the neck, I tacked them together with ribbon in two places. It was pretty difficult because the ribbon kept tearing on what is presumably the plastic water jug, but I got the two so I was happy. The remainder of the neck fur I glued to the back of the head and also glued two ears cut out of black construction paper. They were a bit too round, so I ended up cutting them into a more triangular bear ear shape later on. His bright eye was rather loose, so I glued it down, then the fur, ears, and eye to dry overnight. The next morning, I removed the tape 
and Mr. Bear is ready to adorn the head of a ferocious Viking Berserker. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.